Okay, so the next set of videos uh, is our virtual uh, mock interview. And um, the student or the applicant is Alex Beck, and he's going to be starting his second here at WVSOM. And, uh, you know, it's going to show you some, uh, some differences uh, in a virtual versus in person. Uh, you know, the, the environment, your background, uh, the picture, you know, uh, on your uh, computer that you'll be using. Um, so there'll be some, you know, there'll be some subtle differences uh, that you'll need to um, observe versus the in-person. All right, Alex. So thank you so much for being with us today. We're glad you could join us. Absolutely. Love to be here. My name's Ryan. I'm Dawn. And we'll go ahead and get started with the interview. Um, so to begin, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. You know, like you should know, uh, my name is Alex Beck. I am uh, feel like I would describe myself as a fun, easygoing, hardworking guy from Southern California. Um, but going from California, went, to, uh, went all the way across to the East Coast to Cornell University where I majored in nutritional science and also ran track there. And after graduation, I worked at a, uh, at a wound care service going, you know, all, every, everywhere across Southern California, meeting new people, different cultures, and being able to be in tune with them. And then af after that, during the COVID time, um, you know, I decided to move actually here to, to West Virginia with, because uh, I, I have family here. And I was actually really, really blessed and really happy that I was able to work at a CAMC Memorial CMC Memorial in Charleston and you know like that is just you know it was it was an experience just to be you know in tune with the community actually be able to get a feel of you know the people that are around this area and you know I loved it especially working in the hospital I was in the ER um, just working as a as a health unit coordinator so I would be between uh, patients and doctors and nurses just getting all that information in and talking to a lot of the doctors actually you know, made me more more in tune and more knowledgeable of uh, of your school and your university. You know, I definitely looked up to them, and that is one of you know one of the reasons why I applied. Thank you. Why do you want to be a physician? Well, simply put, uh, I want to be a physician because they are one of the coolest and best uh, investigators out there. You know. And just, I, I would say that I'm, I'm a people person. I love being around people, especially new, different people. You know, even people that, you know, can ma make you a little nervous, get your heart pounding. But, uh, you know, just to be in front of somebody that, you know, you don't know. And just to have that wanting to, uh, how, do I, how do I say this, you know, simply put to help, but essentially just to help them figure out what they need to and to, you know, be able to get them into uh, a, health, a healthy state. I think it is very, very important as a, as a job. But like I said, the investigating part, I just think it's amazing just the knowledge that a, phys a physician has in terms of, you know, the, the body, the different, the different parts of the body, the physiology, the anatomy, all of it just opens opens your eyes and your mind to something that you know the majority of people don't have and that is that's what I want I want to be a physician for that reason okay so you've talked about why you want to be a physician but what specifically draws you to osteopathic medicine that's I was expecting that question <laughs> naturally um, but you know I don't want to do the basic you know it's holistic. I'm sure you guys have probably heard that a lot and it's, you know, one of the ma main tenets. Um, but I would say uh, being an osteopathic physician, it is more body, mind, and spirit, you know, in tune. And that in a way, at least, at least for me, um, I would use that to uh, guide my practice and my work to try and move away from, you know, drugs and just get, just giving people medicine just to make themselves feel better for a week or two, you know, like I want to be able to 
use my hands, be involved with the patient, be involved with their body, and you know, make it so that they heal for, for a long term instead of just you know, something that might make them feel better for a day, but you know, something that they get addicted to. And that's, you know, my, I, I have experience with that with my grandmother, you know, she was over medicated and, you know, it just broke my heart that there was nothing that I could do, but still these doctors were just drugs after drugs after drugs and, you know, until, until she was gone. But, you know, not to, ma not to make it a sob story, but that is something that I hope to gain from going to an osteopathic school for sure. Have you ever witnessed OMT? Um, I actually have not. You know, in, uh, in California, there's not uh, a lot of uh, osteopathic physicians there, and um, also in New York as well. I didn't, I didn't see a lot either. It's pretty much mostly just, just MDs. But you know, while I uh, was working in a uh, Camsey Memorial, there were naturally like lots and lots of, of, of DOs there. So I was able to, you know, see their work even though they weren't necessarily doing uh, OMT. And the way that they're involving themselves with, with the patients is just something that it was, you know, completely different. And at least I was able to tell um, from the MDs is that they were, you know, more, more involved and actually like look, looked, in, looked into the patient's eyes and, you know, cared. You know, didn't didn't care about you know moving on from from next to next. Like they're very present in in the moment. Thank you. So, Alex, it looks like you had some trouble with your biochemistry class. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, uh, definitely not something that I want to talk about naturally. But you know, I, I understand that it must be done. Uh, you know, I was having trouble. Uh, with that course at the beginning, um, luckily at my school there was uh, free free tutors that, that were there that I definitely reached out so I can get so I can get some more help. Um, but unfortunately, there was a lot uh, a lot in the background that was going on that kind of uh, just was 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 holding me back from being able to put in my full effort and my full involvement into into the schoolwork and unfortunately even even with the help that I was getting from the tutor um, I wasn't able to uh, bring that grade up but definitely in the subsequent semesters I definitely made sure just to you know keep a keep keep a good list and a good uh, how do I say this just uh, just a good calendar of what the, I definitely need to do to make sure that you know, if anything were to happen where I wasn't able to give my all, then I would be, then I would be set for myself, like in a, in a preparation sort of way. Okay, so why WVSOM? What makes you want to come here? Um, I, would say, I would say first off, you know, it is, in terms of osteopathic schools, it is one of, one of the best, especially in rural care. I definitely know that I want to, uh, as a physician, go to those places that, you know, don't have don't have the best of things and you know be that person to you know hold hold down the fort to you know to be to be knowledgeable you know from everything that I, that I, I would learn at the school and you know just I guess just to be that to be that guide to be that person in the community uh, that people can count on that people trust uh, to be able to form a relationship like that um, but also. Um, like I like I said, I am, you know, grew up grew up in uh, in Southern California, um, but I do have a lot of family here in West Virginia that I just was not able to experience for you know many many years, um, and you know, being here uh, for the past year has definitely you know opened up my eyes to a place that you know I've never been able to experience, and. You know, especially with the support that my family brings, um, because you know I got family in here, or sorry, in the, in, in Greenbri Greenbrier East, uh, in White Sulphur, you know, Charleston. Uh, to to be able to have that support is something that I definitely 
would want this time around in my education because like I, like I said, going from California to New York, you know, there, you, don't have a lot of <laughs> you don't have a lot of people over there in your corner besides the people that you're going to school with. Um, so I, I would definitely say just, you know, the notoriety of WBSOM on its own and then, you know, being able to have a, a home away from home in a way. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Alex. Thank you for your time. And uh, you'll he be hearing from us soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciated talking to you guys. Uh. This applicant was a virtual, uh, was a virtual interview we offer in person and virtual interview. So there's some things that you need to be knowledgeable about with your virtual interview. Uh, number one is your environment, the environment around you, making sure that uh, mom and dad or brothers and sisters or your spouse, you know, they're not in the camera. Uh, there's no pets in the in the camera. And obviously, uh, he's got a he's got a really nice um, background, very very tidy, uh, clean environment. Uh, he's sitting up straight and he's dressed appropriately too, which is something that I didn't point out in the first uh, in the uh, first video was uh, Natalie is dressed very appropriately, very appropriately, very businesslike uh, in her attire, and so is uh, Alex in the virtual. Um, he's also smiling. He's very relaxed, um, <clears throat> and he's very descriptive about aspects of himself. You know, when the interviewer is asking, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself took time out to talk about uh, some interesting things in his life, and that's great, and that's what you need to do. Um, he's also showing some excitement and energy uh, in the interview, and that shows an appreciation uh, to the folks that, uh, you know, that invited him for the interview. That's very important, too. Um, and very descriptive about his uh, uh, experiences at CAMC, and he also pointed out that he learned, just didn't learn from uh, physicians, but he also learned from nurses. You know, he interacted with nurses uh, and uh, learned that clinical environment from them as well. So that shows that you're, you know, a good team player and you're going to listen to everybody and respect everyone that you work with. So those were good, uh, uh, good descriptions. So I think, you know, with when we when he was asked the question of why medicine or, you know, what motivated you to, be, to want to be a physician, he talked about being an investigator. That's fine, but maybe be a little more descriptive on something that maybe an internal desire of why he wants to be a physician or an experience that he had or an interaction he had with, with a physician that made him solidify that desire. So when he was talking about uh, his um, about osteopathic medicine, uh, he really did a good job of talking about using his using his hands, and that's understanding the culture of this school. If you're interviewing here, you know that uh, there's a lot of emphasis on learning how to manipulate the musculoskeletal structure. So he uh, he made a point to uh, talk about hey, as a physician, he wants to use his hands to uh, treat patients, and that's great. He also had not witnessed OMT, and that's fine. A lot of physicians don't practice OMT, but he was able to talk about uh, holistic, uh, the holistic aspect of osteopathic medicine, and that shows his not, you know, that he's done his research on, of osteopathic medicine. You know, if you've shadowed a DO, um, even though they have, you have not witnessed OMT, uh, make sure you're very descriptive and. Uh, you know, and what that DO, how they treated patients and what you saw and what you learned. And he was, uh, uh, obviously he was able to do that. Uh, he was not defensive in um, talking about his uh, biochemistry deficits. And he was also clear on how he overcame those deficits, specifically when you talked about having a tutor and you, utilizing a tutor. And uh, you know, that's what we're wanting to know is, okay, yeah, we see that you got the C, or the D in the course, but what did you do to overcome it? Did you utilize a tutor? Did you uh, increase your office hours with, with your professors? Um, did, you, did you engage in more study groups? When he was asked the question about um, his interest in, um, or, or uh, why WVSOM, um, <clears throat> he talked about role, his interest in role areas and mentioned family, that he has family in uh, West Virginia. 
Um, and he spent some time living in West Virginia before he came to school. So, and he was descriptive of what he's seen and his interactions with folks in rural areas, his family. Uh, so that's, that's also good. Uh, that shows that you've done your uh, research and uh, that you've become knowledgeable of the area or the school that you're applying to. Well, hello, Alex. Uh, glad you could be with us. Mm -hmm. Seemed like you were having a lot of trouble getting logged into the meeting. Uh, yeah. Do you think you're good to go now? Yeah, I mean, like, I think it's okay. I'm, I don't know. I mean, we're talking right now, so. <laughs> okay, good, good. Well, uh, I'm, I'm Ryan. I'm Dawn. And we'll just get started. Um, so first, will you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, my name's Alex. I'm from, uh, from SoCal and went to, went to school at Cornell and I don't know. Uh, yeah, now I'm trying to apply to med school, I guess. <laughs> Why do you want to be a physician? I mean, I heard they make a lot of money, but <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a, uh, I think it's cool. Like a bunch of a bunch of my friends in school wanted to were on that path, and I was just like, "Why not? I think I can do it." Uh, so, yeah. So here I am, you know, just trying to make my way. So why do you want to be an osteopathic physician? Do you, do you know what a DO is? Um, kind of. I like they're kind of kind of doctors. I I've heard around the block. Uh, but I don't know. They do. I don't know. Uh, chi like chiropractor type type stuff. I think with like you know cracking cracking backs, I think that's pretty cool to be like both a doctor and a chiropractor, so. Have you ever witnessed OMT? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I wanna, I wanna say that I saw somebody doing OMT at a, one of my sports games, I think, but honestly, I couldn't tell if they were a, uh, you know, a doctor or a, uh, athletic trainer. See ya. So Alex, I noticed that uh, you had some trouble with your biochemistry class. Can you just kind of talk about that? Explain what happened? Honestly, like that was that was not that was not my fault. I uh, I don't, I don't even know. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that the professor had it, had it out for me. You know, I did I did the work and really like I I I I I did the work, but but didn't didn't nothing came out of it. I don't I don't know. It definitely wasn't my fault though, and I just don't think that uh, I don't know. It was just a bad grade, but hey, C's get C's get degrees out here, and hey, I'm applying to med school now, so. So why WBSOM? What makes you want to come here? Um, I guess like, you know, I looked up online, you know, best, best programs and, you know, WBSOM came up. So, you know, that's good. You know, I just want to go to uh, one, of, one of the better schools if, I, if I'm going to be like half chiropractor, half doctor. Um, Y'all are good with, with rural stuff. As much as I don't really want to be out in the boonies, uh, you know, I guess it'd be cool to, you know, learn out in the woods and stuff. So, but I, I don't know. When it comes to all that rural stuff, uh, I'm kind of from, like, a bigger city. I don't know if you guys would, you know, understand since you, you know, live in West Virginia. But uh, I, don't, I don't know. It just, like, w WVSOM seems like not has like high stress and like high strung. So I think some something a little bit more mellow might uh, might be good for me just in terms of, you know, my jitteriness. I feel like sometimes I'm just all over the place, but yeah, I don't know. I think that's why. Okay, 
Well, Alex, we really appreciate your time. Uh, you'll you'll hear from us soon. All right, sounds good. I, uh, yeah, I really hope I, I get in. I think it'd be uh, I think we'd have a fun time. Thank All you. All right, thank you so much. Sounds good. Have a good day. Thanks. Yeah, we just saw the video of uh, this applicant, um, and obviously uh, did not exhibit uh, positive interview skills. Very important in a virtual interview, as in an in-person interview, that you are on time. You, you, you dress appropriately, and you're on time. Uh, obviously, he was not dressed appropriately. Uh, the tie was slack, slacked. He was laying back. It's okay to be relaxed, but not too relaxed, uh, and, and kind of in a disrespectful manner. So, it was, you know, it was a very sloppy uh, interview. Uh, and one thing I want to point out is uh, dressing appropriately uh, and being on time. Um, first impressions go a long way. When you're on, on time and you're dressed appropriately for your, uh, your interview or your meeting, with a school or a company, it shows respect and appreciation for that for those folks. Yes, yeah, so he was a little bit too laid back, uh, way laid back, very sloppy environment, uh, very poor eye contact, uh, not looking the interviewers or not looking in the camera, uh, very j jittery. Uh, these are obvious. One thing I want to point out is he was asked about uh, osteopathic medicine, his knowledge of osteopathic medicine. He says, and he said he has. Uh, no idea about uh, osteopathic manipulation techniques. Even though, even if you have not spent a lot of time with uh, osteopathic physicians, uh, do your research. Go on YouTube, uh, uh, watch videos of uh, osteopathic physicians performing OMT, or read articles about uh, the philosophies of osteopathic medicine. You know, there's a lot of information out there about Andrew Taylor Steele, who. Uh, you know, who uh, is basically the father of osteopathic medicine. So know your history, uh, know the, uh, do your research about osteopathic medicine before you uh, come to the interview, even if you have not spent a lot of time with osteopathic physicians. And again, uh, you know, when he was asked about uh, his low grade in, bi in biochemistry, uh, he blamed the professor. A big red flag, don't blame uh, the professor. You know, there's some, uh, you know, faculty out there that are tough, but in the end, it's it's your problem. You own it. So again, yeah, this is, uh, it's very obvious. This is a very unprofessional um, interview. Uh, professionalism is very important, very important. And what I mean by professional, uh, being a professional is uh, being uh, polite and courteous, but also exhibiting um, good communication skills, and being knowledgeable and confident of what you're wanting to be. Okay, thank you for observing uh, these videos. Um, we really appreciate, if you're watching these videos, uh, that shows an interest in, uh, in West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine, and we really appreciate that. And we really, you know, the reason why we're putting on uh, these videos and tips is to hopefully uh, increase your not just increase your uh, interview skills, but when you know when when the time comes for your interview and you're in that environment, uh, we want you to do well. Um, so uh, thank you for observing the videos. If you have questions, do not hesitate uh, to reach out to our admissions office.